Hi everyone, Anthony here, and today I'm smoking the Placencia Ama Fuerte. So first, let's get into the name, Ama Fuerte. What does it mean in Spanish? It means strong soul. And it's a very fitting name for this cigar when you think about it. It is the true essence and the soul of Nicaragua. It comes from four different growing regions within Nicaragua. So it really shows the true essence of Nicaragua, the soul of Nicaragua. But before we get into that, a little background about the Placencia family. You know, Nestor Sr. and his son now, Nestor Jr., are the largest growers of premium tobacco in Central America. And for many years, they grew tobacco for other factories, for other blends that didn't have their name on it. And they came out with some blends with their name on it for some years, you know, in the late 90s, early 2000s. But those brands kind of fell by the wayside. And then fast forward, 2016, they decided to come out with a blend with their name on it that really spoke to the true soul of Nicaragua and showcase what they have to offer the world in premium cigars. That's where the Ama for Work Day was born. The strong soul was born. So unlike their previous releases to the market, they wanted something that would be elevated from a construction, from an aging process, right? Also from their best farms. So they wanted something that would be in that upper echelon to compete with brands like Padron Anniversarios, Ashton ESG. The way they envisioned it, it was like the best that they had to offer. So that's why this cigar is definitely a higher caliber cigar. It's in that same kind of like arena when you think about it. It's an ultra premium Nicaraguan blend. And as I said, the fact that it has all these different growing regions, there's a lot of different flavor notes going on. Strength wise, I put the cigar at medium to full for sure. But, you know, to me, it has a very distinctive driving note of like this ginger snap. If you ever had a ginger snap cookie, it has cinnamon notes to it. But let's circle back to that ginger snap. When you think about that, there's taste of molasses there, but it has a sharpness to it, a good sharpness to it. And combined with some leather, some black pepper, and where I really get the molasses is on the finish. Yeah, so at first, when I was thinking about the finish, I knew it had a sweetness to it, but I couldn't put my finger on exactly what I was tasting. And then I came to the conclusion, I was like, no, this tastes like molasses, because I've tasted that ginger snap kind of flavor profile right from the jump with the cigar, and then I had to think about it. What do, what do I enjoy? What, what are the flavor notes I even pull out of what, what a ginger snap is? And there's a sweetness of molasses there, along with that kind of like, good bite of ginger, you know what I mean? It wakes up your palate. But it has nice notes of black pepper as well. You know, like all Nicaraguan tobacco, I think there's an underlying note of nuts there, for sure. Um, but a really balanced cigar. Anytime you're talking about a cigar that has tobacco in there that's been aged 10 years or more, it brings out refinement, but it also brings out the character of the blend. And it also allows that tobacco to rest and meld together. So you, what you you're, you'll wind up with is a cigar that is intense, full flavored, but in round, round notes, which is really the ultimate goal when you're blending cigars. If you have the availability to lay down tobacco for 10 years or more, and when you think about it, the Placentias have been at it for generations, starting in Cuba, then in Nicaragua, Honduras. They have the arsenal of tobacco to do that. So, you know, this is a project 10 years prior to the release in 2016, they already started to accumulate tobacco for, right? They already had that thought, eventually we're gonna come up with something. But that's the beauty of obviously the size of the operation. They had the availability and the arsenal of tobacco to sit back 10 years, be patient, and put something to the market that was outstanding. All right, so I know you guys are out there waiting for me just to crack into this pairing. But first, I gotta talk about the size. I mean, look at that beautiful cigar. So it's actually a perfecto shape, a salamone, if you will. What that means is it's shaped at the top, the head of the cigar, and also at the foot. As a matter of fact, you could actually still see the end of the cigar, the foot of the cigar, that's holding that ash into that shape. 
also box press. So a very complicated shape to make, a very elegant shape. You know, they call it the generacion number five or generacion V as they call it. But in reality, when people look at the cigar, they're gonna say, no, it's a Perfecto. Oh, it's a Salomon. So it's a seven by 58. So a nice long cigar. And when they say 58, you have to remember, they're gauging it from the widest part of the cigar. So people will look at it and be like, well, it's really tapered at the end. It's supposed to be tapered at the end. So when you see the size, seven by 58, you know it's from the, the length is seven and 58 is at this widest point before it narrows down into that Perfecto shape. Again, a very hard shape to roll. But we don't always talk about how it influences the flavor of the cigar, how the cigar presents, right? So, you know, earlier today, I happened to smoke the Robusto variation of this blend. And it definitely smokes much different. Of course, the same tobacco, excellent. But it smokes differently than the Perfecto or Salomon shape. And the reason why I say that is when you light up the Robusto, immediately you get this blast of black pepper that you have to kind of like push through a little bit to find different notes. You're looking for what else the cigar brings to the table. With this shape, because it's narrow at the end, when you first light it up, that pepper is kind of out of the way, right? Because it hasn't opened up yet. It starts off, you start tasting notes of like ginger snap and cinnamon. I even get a little molasses on the finish right away. And then as soon as that cigar opens up to its widest part, that 58, then that black pepper comes driving in. So it just goes to show you how the different shapes influence the blend itself. Um, both smoked excellent, but if I had my way, this is the shape I'd smoke in this blend because it's just beautiful, it's elegant, and it just, it changes as you smoke it too. Not only because of the shape, think about the length of it. It has time for transitions. The Robusto definitely changed as I smoked it, but not as much as this cigar already. It's already transitioning, more intensity as you get along. You know, as the cigar narrows, you gotta remember, started out narrow, opened up, and then it's gonna narrow again. With that, those all those flavors I'm talking about are just gonna get more intense as I smoke the cigar down. So today for the pairing, I chose Michter's American Whiskey. And I'll tell you why. I think the spirit and the cigar are a true reflection of each other. Different elements, right? Cigar, spirit. But I think what the manufacturer of the cigar, Placenti, was trying to convey is exactly what Michter's was trying to convey at their distillery. When he came to something that was very intense, very flavorful, but also with rounded flavors. What I like to call controlled aggression, right? You want something that's gonna be big, bold, and intense, but you don't want something that's gonna overwhelm your palate and then get lost in your palate, right? So American whiskey, what makes it American whiskey and not bourbon? Of course, Michter's is known for their distillery in Kentucky, for their bourbon, for their rice. But if you might've seen the American whiskey on the shelf, where do they differentiate? Well, technically, it really is a bourbon but it can't be classified as a bourbon because it's aged in former bourbon barrels. Where a bourbon, to be classified as bourbon, has to be aged in new American oak. And the aging process in former bourbon barrels adds a level of intensity that wouldn't be there if it was new oak. That's why I thought it would be a perfect pairing with this Ama Fuerte. Because to me, it has controlled aggression. It has really strong tobacco in it because of the aging process. You know, 10 years plus, all that tobacco has mellowed out, right? It got rounder, but it maintained its intensity. As a matter of fact, the American whiskey is only about north of 83 proof, right? And when you think about that, as far as other bourbons go, some people might think it has a, like a more of a thin kind of profile to it, but that couldn't be further from the truth. As a matter of fact, like on the nose itself, you get vanilla notes jump right out of you, right? And some citrus is mixed with it. And then on the palate, you got still have that vanilla, that driving note of vanilla, some butterscotch, but there's an oakiness to it as well. So it picks up the oak, it picks up the barrel. Even though they're former bourbon barrels, it still picks up that oakiness. But a really clean finish. I think it really is a bold, intense whiskey, but 
because it's not high proof, it's still rounded in flavor. And that's the, really the element that I get from the cigar. When I was thinking about it, and I, by the way, I've never put these two together. This is today, I thought of what would go well with this cigar. And in, as whiskey terms went, I knew it wanted to be a whiskey, right? And I was like, Michter's American Whiskey is the choice because they, they are, to me, a reflection of each other. And then when you combine the flavors from the American whiskey with the notes of the Placencia Alba Fuerte, which we talked about, ginger snap, right? There's definitely a woody note to it as well, but a nuttiness to it, cinnamon, and of course, that kind of, I think is like a really signature backdoor molasses kind of flavor to it. That finish that resonates, a very long finish, mixed with the notes of vanilla, butterscotch, a little citrus of the American whiskey, I think they just really work well together. I really do. I think they're just really are mirror images of each other. Just two different, th you know, things that I love and I enjoy, and I'm sure you love and you enjoy. If you're watching this channel, you love and enjoy this, right? But they're made for each other. It, we always talk about perfect pairings. This is a perfect pairing, no doubt about it. So I want to thank you for joining me. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and the pairing. But before we depart, make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you here next time.